Water, it is everywhere. The planet that we live on probably could be called ocean, as many people have said, instead of Earth, it's covered mostly with water, but it's something that we don't uh, think about. It's almost so ubiquitous. One of my interests in thinking with water is to explore the many different ways that we can take water out of the background and find uh, ways for it to stop being just this silent backdrop um, to our lives, because it's so much more than that. Um, we've entered a time of what many commentators call water crisis. Our relationship to water as humans, and here I, I do talk at the species level, you know, as humans has become fraught in so many ways. We are used to having water in places that it no longer is. And although this has always been a question um, on Earth that has always been changing, right now, given our increasing population and given the uh, industrialization of the globe increasingly, um, the question of access to water is increasingly fraught and political and economic and cultural. Um, so in the Anthropocene, water is an unavoidable question. We have to deal with it in ways that we're not accustomed to dealing with it. And right now the signs are that we're not dealing with it very well. Privatization of water utilities. Um, this summer in Detroit, uh, you know, a big city in the United States, a large portion of that city had their water cut off because they could no longer pay the bills. They're urgent in, a, in an environmental and a social justice register, but they also ask important questions of us at this moment about how we are going to renegotiate our human contract with the non-human world. And water is necessary for our life and for the life of most other, if not all other species on our planet. I believe even the most you know, driest of plants are at least 50% water. Water has become primarily a resource. It's something that we primarily look at in terms of ecological services. And this we that I'm talking about uh, is kind of false. I mean, we, meaning people in the West, people who have easy access to water where we just open a tap and it comes out. Um, we think about it as just that, something that we can use for our own purposes. But through history, water has been extremely important spiritually, symbolically, religiously, culturally. What is really interesting, though, is the way water can push us out of some of our very comfortable habits of thought. What do I mean by that? We're terrestrial beings, we live on the land, couldn't survive without water. It's such a cliche, but we're 60 to 90% water. Yet we also couldn't survive in water. And I think it's so fascinating that the majority of our planet is covered by a habitat or is a habitat um, in which we can't survive. What would it mean to think all of our daily questions uh, from a more aqueous perspective. We breathe differently down there. Um, water is a question of ethics. In very common, sensical ways, when we think about floods and tsunamis and drought, um, environmental justice, who has access to it, something that we buy and sell and privatize and bottle and commodify. But I think water can also teach us a lot about ethics um, in terms of living relationally with others. The water that is in my body leaves me and becomes bodies of other bodies of water. The water that I ingest has come from somewhere and I am literally ingesting other bodies um, into my own. So in these ways water becomes a very interesting ethical question if we want to look at questions of relational ethics. So thinking with water can really trouble and disturb some of our comfortable ways of thinking about knowledge. The bottom of the sea is less explored than the surface of the moon. We know more about other planets than we do um, about what is underneath the water on our own. And I think that raises a very interesting epistemological question about the limits of knowability and the lengths that we'll go to as human beings um, to know things. Um, we spend billions of dollars sending submersibles down to the depths of the oceans to try to figure out and find out what's there. And I think water, sort of just by its very essence and by what it is, asks of us the question, 
do we need to do that and should we be doing that and what are the risks of this impetus to know and explore everything. Um, so in that sense, uh, knowledge is also an ethical question that water asks us. At this particular moment, um, as we're re-choreographing the waters of the planet in such drastic ways, it really behooves us to stop and think about how we're doing it and why we're doing it, to the benefit of whom and, you know, um, to the detriment of whom, and that whom being both human and certainly more than human species. My friend Janine says we study water because we love water. And uh, there's a, a hydrophilia, you know, that she sometimes talks about. We love water because it's sensual and it's enigmatic and it holds, holds memories and it holds histories. It's also terrifying. I personally am petrified of deep water. Um, I think I sometimes study it as a form of self-therapy. But without a doubt, water is enigmatic and it calls to us. And I think good research is research that comes out of not choosing a subject, but a subject choosing you. And um, water has certainly chosen me, and uh, I hope it chooses more people too. Water is a teacher. Water and following water's uh, movements, following water's rhythms, the places water takes me, both literally and imaginatively, has led to a different sort of academic practice. Water informs my, how I write, how I research, how I think, how I collaborate with other beings. I mean, water is the most collaborative substance I can imagine. It draws things into it. It's, um, it, it, it collects different kinds of beings and it brings them together in this amazing conversation. And I think it's asked me to try to emulate that in the kind of work that I do. And as this collaborative medium, I think water can also teach us something about what it means to do scholarship in the Anthropocene, particularly in environmental humanities. What are those questions, like water, that ask us to all come around the table and discuss because we're all implicated in the commons that is water?